Howdy fixers, this is uh, Fixer Good here. So today I'm gonna show you how to take out the pistons at a 22R from 84 up to 95. And it's basically the same process all the way up to that year model. Um, so two major things is I did this, I was doing after this just because it has low compression in cylinder four. Not for any other reason, not because of rod knock or it had a um, rod bearing starting to slap or, or knock or a piston slap or anything like it, just bad compression. This is not gonna fix any other, any other of your issues. So with that out of the way, you also wanna make sure if you're gonna do the pistons that you look at your pistons when you take this stuff out, make sure that they say 20 over, 30 over, or 40 over, or 50 over. And in our case, these pistons were 50 over. So, um, and I'm just, I'm just gonna give you a basic run through of how to do things um, and what's going on. If you wanna see how to take the head off, Go ahead and check out this video right here. And then um, at the end of the video, I'll tell another little talk up with you. And I will show you, I'll give you another link to the video at the very end. So uh, thanks for watching. And if you like my video, give me a like, give me a subscribe. And uh, thanks for watching. So your first steps, you want to go ahead and take off your splash band there. And then you want to take off these bolts here. And right there. And we're on the same side. And then we're going to take our pan bolts off, and we should be able to drop our pan after we drop our oil out. So now my pan's out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and take these 14s out, and this one coming to the other side, and the one on the side, I'll take this bracket off. We're going to do the same on both sides, and then we're going to go ahead and go after our pan. So you're going to want to take these 14 millimeter bolts off here on the bottom of your, uh, of your rod cap. And then you want to make sure that your cap is marked. It'll be marked on the side here. You can't really see at the very top, but it's marked four. And you want to do that on the top part and the bottom part of your cap. So now that you got the bottom cap off, you want to make sure you keep that in the direction you took it off. Make sure it's orientated correctly because you don't want to have oil starvation problems later. And this is what it looks like. Make sure that you keep your tangs in the proper position on your cap so they don't get mixed up. So now, if you get that loose a little bit, you want to take like some fuel hose, three eighths, and you want to stick it on your things like that. You want to do them on both ends, and then we're gonna try to push it out the top. So we're just gonna take our thing, just kind of hit this with an extension, just really softly, and it should pop out through the top. So I've tapped this a little bit and it's come out a little bit this far. It's just it's really tight so I gotta have to tap it just a little bit more and I'm suspecting that there is something wrong with the piston itself. So here we go. So I got the piston rubbed out so this is why we didn't have any compression in number one. Because this is bye bye. So we're gonna see if our cylinder wall is gonna be salvageable or not. So let's see what happens. So now we're going to go after number one. We just did four, so I'm going to take those 14s off, and then I'm going to put my little hose on the fans and knock that piston out, because we're just going to do the pistons, just because they might all be like the one that we just took out, and we want to, we're not going to have to redo any plastic gauge or anything like that. We're just going to have to do, uh, put our old shims back in, our old bearings back in. So you just want to take your extension like the other one and hit right there where it's at on your bolt that pop out a little bit, pull out your cap. So yeah, that's where you want to put it and you just want to tap it right there and it should push the piston out. So, so I should have told you this before you take it out, you just want to mark this, make sure it's going towards the front. And this is the fourth piston in the back, it's our blown up one. And this little notch is the same on our new pistons and it goes towards the front of the engine if you get mixed up. You also want to do a paint mark down here just so you know which way it goes towards the front. So now we're gonna get some pliers and we're gonna go ahead and pull this together and it should drive this pin out with maybe a drift like this and it should come out. So we got the old one out. I just drove it out with a hammer and just tapped till I got to a certain point and it came out. So now we're gonna put this new one on there. So we're gonna stay snap ring and just put it in there. So these are the kits that have the pistons and the rings that we need, and there's a nice little way for you to put your rings on. It shows you which one and where to put them, and I'm going to show you how to do it. 
So first thing you want to do is you want to take this oil ring and put it on the bottom. And then we're going to stretch these other ones on here. And they go on pretty easy, so you just put it there in the groove. And then we'll put our other one there. See? Just like that. And then we're going to take this one. And we're going to feed it on there. So you're going to take your uh, ring and put it in the groove here. And then just kind of have it like that. And you can just feed it down into place. So this is going to be the bottom part. And you're going to take your other ring and you're going to put it on the top of this oil ring. And when you're doing this, you just want to make sure you see that opening there. You just want them all different so they don't all line up because you can have issues that they all line up. So let's do the other one. So on this one, sometimes it makes a difference if you put the bevel down or not. And so we're just going to put the bevel down on this one. Because there's, this says you can do either way. You can flip it like this or you can have it like this. It doesn't matter. But we're going to put it down like this. I have it like, you want to have it like this and just kind of stretch it around. Be careful not to pinch it because it will break because they're made out of hard carbide, I think. So just go ahead and stretch it around and get it in place. Then you want to take your top groove ring from your box there and just do the same and just move it work around and get it in place. And just put your groove different from all the other grooves so it doesn't line up like the bottom. Before you drive this pin into your new piston and stuff, you want to use some oil. Just drape it on this and then drive it through so it's not dry when you have it going. So you got it about right with this little ring that's in here, this little groove. Then we're going to take our snap ring. Just push it in. And it's not going anywhere. So your next steps, you're going to need a tool like this and it presses your rings so you can get your piston back into the hole. Just squeeze it down, makes it nice and tight. Then you put this in the hole and you tap on the top and it comes out. It's pretty easy stuff. So before you do this and put it in there, you want to spray some WD-40 on your cylinder walls. And you want to put some oil here on your rings. So your cylinders look pretty good and still have a pretty good crosshatch. This engine's been rebuilt before, so we don't really have to worry about any going with the ball home or anything like that. So it should be okay. And so then we're gonna put it in. I'll show you how to do it. So if you're ever doing any work like this, you want to make sure you're looking for crosshatches like this. It looks nice. That's why we're thinking we can just go ahead and put new pistons in here. It'll be okay. Or just the cross hatching in there after they rebuilt it last time looks amazing. You just want to make sure that your holes are lined up like they're supposed to be, like that, and then you don't have bearings sticking over or anything like that. They're lined up. You have this tang in the right tang hole there. So you want to make sure you put these on the end of your piston just because you don't want to score the cylinder walls with your threads. You just want to make sure that being we're using these uh, bearings over, we're not doing it's not like a precision job or anything like that, we're just reusing them. Hey guys, so I know these pistons look a little different because the pistons that we were given were for an 84 and the block we had was an 85, so we had to do some different pistons. So, what I'm going to show you is you want to measure your tubing here and just cut it off like down here so you can stick that over your threads. So, when you do hit this down in the hole with a hammer, you're not going to scar your uh, cylinder walls with these threads, which will happen. So you just want to make sure you cover these up when you put them back in the hole. And you also want to put some uh, engine assemb assembly lube here by, made by Permatex. I'll show you here in a second. Second, And you just want to put that in there and put it, your uh, main bearing, put your rod bearings back in place. We're not, they, we're not replacing them because they're not worn out or anything like that. This engine's been replaced and rebuilt recently and they just some they just had issues with it so we're going to just replace the, or use rod bearings and then we're going to put it back in so what you want to do is you want to take your new bearing and lay it down in the slot and you have your tang that tang you want to line that tang up with this hole here you can see your holes there those holes line up with this hole here you want to lay some uh 
engine assembly lube in here so it's not going to be a dry start or anything like that once you start a vehicle you want to place your bearing down push it down make sure it's flush and then we're just going to put a little bit up here and then we're going to move it back and forth so once you get it in place you got your tab orientated that always goes towards the front and so we're just going to tap now I'm going to go underneath there and I'm going to check make sure it's all lined so I can look up in there it looks like it's going to be lined up properly so I'm going to go ahead and continue the tap down well, I need to rotate it a little bit it's not quite lined up so I'm going to rotate a little bit then I'm going to tap it down some and you can rotate your uh, rod down there by twisting this and I'll move it out of place but I just already twisted it so it should go down into place now I'm just going to tap some more oh. so there we go that's how you put your pistons in it's nice and flush get another little that. you hear that it's good and solid sounding that means that you're flush against your um, crank down there now we're going to go ahead and uh, put our cap on and cork it up so before you put your cap in, this is where it's kind of critical. So the marks I showed you earlier, it's a 4T. So you want to make sure that these are lined up with the other one that's on your piston rod. Um, if you don't have these marks already, you want to make sure you make these marks because either way that you put this on is going to determine if you're going to have a bad time or not. Because if you put this on the wrong way, uh, it's your clearances for oil and all that stuff are going to be messed up because these are actually more forged and then they're cut and then they're uh they're hollowed out and then they're cut so they're you can't they're cut one way so you can't mismatch them you can't even buy parts like that so just want to make sure that you put this in the right spot so if you're going to do it this way you just want to use like your hand hammer handle and go down to make sure it's nice and stiff against your uh, crankshaft down there. So once you get your uh, caps all up there, you want to finger, you know, just snug them up on each side with your fingers or with a socket. You don't want to tighten them really at all. And then once you get that, you just go from side to side with a torque wrench and do 45 foot pounds on each side. And that should be sufficient enough to keep everything torque. So when you need to take this dipstick thing off in order to get your other rods out of the way, you want to replace the gasket on your pickup tube and you want to tighten this back up and we're going to clean all our gasket area here for our oil pan make sure it's all clean. I might even clean some of this oil here off the pan just to know that it's not coming from our, our pan or anything like that when we go back together. So look at that. If you did what I told you to do, you're a professional now. You know exactly what you're doing. Um, so we got the pistons in there, and everything's back together on the bottom. So, and we're gonna put it back together. So if you, you want to show, if you want, if you want to learn how to put the rest of everything back on, check out my other video I have, and uh, I'll show you how to put it back together. So we're doing the pan gasket now, and uses black ultra gray, black uh, Permatex, and it's good for oil. And you just want to put it down on the back side of the gasket, then on the top side of the gasket. So now that you get your pan back up in there, you want to go ahead and work back and forth, side to side, and just make sure it's good and snug. Not too tight, just, you know, snug. Um, get that tight, and then you want to get your brackets on here. These are 14 millimeter bolts on both sides. Get those brackets back on there. And then we're going to go up top, and uh, if you want to see how to put the rest of the engine together, then go ahead and check out my part two of uh, how to change the head gasket on a 22R. But uh, I'll show you it running here in a second. So we got it back together after we changed the pistons and all that stuff. So we're going to go ahead and fire it up and show you that I would, everything I did was correct. So, so it's running, guys. Um, 
when you first start it up, sometimes you gotta have a little bit of a oil burning because you gotta see rings after you do an engine like this, but it should eventually seat the rings and stop burning oil. So, you know, first 100 miles or so, just keep an extra quart of oil and it should be okay. So that is it, Fixers. Appreciate you watching my video. Um, any questions, just give me a comment down below. Give me a like. Um, main thing is, if you want to see me putting the head back on, check out this video here. Um, so, yeah, that's basically how you do it. Um, but you just, if you're going to start off with doing this, you want to make sure you do a compression test. Just see anything, because that one piston, it had a ring that was bad. It got hot, and then it let the rings down below get super hot, and then that's what caused them to go bad. Uh, not always will you have a ring that doesn't score your cylinder wall and give you issues like we did here. Most of the time, that's a very uncommon occurrence. Um, and the only reason we were able to do this was because the engine had been rebuilt within the last couple of years. And so the scoring on the cylinder walls was still pretty decent. And everything sealed up. It ran great. Like We've already put a thousand miles on it and it's just doing great. So uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully you like my video. Um, be always to hit my subscribe button and hit the bell for all my latest content. And uh, if you want to see something, you've got something, an idea that you might like to see a video of or something that's bothering me, I'm always free. Just give me a like or comment on one of this video here and I can give you some information if you need any help with anything. So thanks for watching. See you guys next time.